So this year has been pretty crazy with the silicon chip shortage and finding parts for the PCB designs I've been working on for clients. In one of my projects, we had to wait three extra weeks because of a single part, which of course was only made by one manufacturer. Just my luck and that really ate into the prototyping time I got for the design. The silicon chip shortage is hitting everyone hard, especially the automotive industry. Even my car is worth a couple thousand dollars more than when I bought it a few years ago, which is ridiculous. Maybe I should sell my car. In any case, if you've done any PCP designs lately, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Just this past week, a senior PCP designer told me that one of his chips has a 380 day lead time. That's a whole year. So the chip shortage has exposed something important about the PCB design process and how we do things today and how it might need to change and for many has already started to. Here I've got a design that's mostly good in terms of part availability, but some of these parts may not be in stock. For instance, this blue LED here. So let me show you the current way I've managed my pillar materials ever since I learned how to design PCB. All through this year, I kept an Excel spreadsheet and I would do my parametric search on DigiKey, you know, put in the information or go on web mouser or something, depending on whatever I prefer. And then I'd have to check if the part is available. This one is not, or it has a weird inventory option I don't really like. So I would either have to go to this down here or find its alternative. So I'd have to go down here and then look at its details. Then I would check the data sheet to see if it has the specifications I need and if it's available, right? And then I'd also have to look at different things like compliance. I may need parts to comply with environmental regulations such as Rojas or Reach or Hassel, you know, scroll down this list and check those and other regulations. And a major factor is underwriters laboratory compliance for the entire product or system. So if this is going on a printed circuit board that needs to be UL approved, you know, it, this may be one of the critical parts. I mean, maybe not a diode, but something else. So in previous work roles, right, we've had non UL approved parts on a PCB hold up an entire system or project from getting system UL approval for two months. Not great. Also check whether the part will become obsolete soon. That's another thing. Often a final design will be used, like it'll be in use for a few years, a final PCB. And I don't want to select parts that will unnecessarily force part updates or inventory issues in the near future. So all of these things have to be taken into consideration. So that's all fine and good. You know, if it checks out, I might grab the manufacturer part number and then put it in my spreadsheet and then replace the part number, the current part number with the due one. Well, that's already replaced and that's all fine and good. But guess what? When I'm working on a big project, that part availability and their lead times often change by the time I'm done with just the schematic and the part availability and options again might change by the time I get to the PCB phase. So by the time I'm done with the PCB layout, the parts will change again, most likely. And then you'd think that's the end of it. Oftentimes schematic changes and part recommendations are made when I'm working on designs while the PCB layout is in process. By the time I have to submit the final bill of materials to the assembly house or two or three part options have changed yet again. So here's a good example, right? These are some bill of materials I sent to Sierra circuits for quoting and I had multiple updates due to last minute part changes plus design for manufacturing changes because sometimes the parts weren't fully through hole or surface amount or something like that. However, even when I submitted the updated final bill of materials, there was a project later in the year where I had for a big client and where I didn't catch an inventory issue early enough. And I sent the board for fabrication and assembly. So this part was only available from one manufacturer and was currently not available for purchase. Like by the time we had submitted the design, it wasn't available. That one part pushed out the product release by three weeks. And that really hurt the time I had for testing. And the thing is, let's say we couldn't have waited three weeks for the part, right? That's fine. But I most likely would have had to find a replacement for that part. Even if I managed to find a suitable replacement, it may not be likely all the time. I may not get lucky enough for it to have the same footprint. So then I might have to redesign that part of the PCB. So while I can keep using the tried and true spreadsheet method and checking every component in the design one by one, which is prone to me making mistakes, 
There's actually a better way I've been using lately. This method quickly identifies components that are at high risk for part obsolescence or availability. And really it cuts my part-time selection in half. So I'm going to show you this new method that lets me focus on engineering design work and PCB layout, not part procurement and managing spreadsheets. While I can hire another engineer to manage the bill of materials, I still have to wait on them to manually update the part information. Ideally, I would want a method or tool that always keeps my part information up to date in real time without me having to think about it. Otherwise, I'm going to fall behind with my design and with my clients, just like I did this past year for an important project. So here I'm using a bomb management tool from Silicon Expert called SE Connect Bomb Risk App. It's under accessories, look an expert. So all I have to do is match my manufacturer part number and the manufacturer part name with the parts and inside this tool's settings. Then I can sign in and view real time ports of all my parts in the design. See, it validates the data and then voila. So instead of manually checking every single part for availability, like I normally would by going into the part properties and checking my spreadsheet, I can actually focus on high and medium risk components that will impact my design. Now, if you're not sure how to have your parts carry all this information, you can check out my video on how to create ORCAD schematic parts from scratch and put the right information inside those parts so things are set up for this tool. All right, so clicking on the high risk components, I see that my transceiver module has some issues. I can check everything about a part without having to open my web browser. This is super convenient as it's all in one place. From a general overview, the technical details, uh, whether it complies to various environmental standards, and I also get ridiculous amounts of detail on just this information that normally takes me maybe five to 10 minutes per part to find sometimes if I'm really paying attention. Then there's the supply chain option that lets me see and get this, which suppliers have the chip in stock, right? This is super, super convenient. I can see that DigiKey has the most of these parts in stock. So here, if we check compliance, we can see that it's compliant in various ways. You know, the reach status that I mentioned earlier, Rojas, and then of course the technical details. I can also see what kind of risk this part will introduce to my design, such as life cycle risk, whether the part can be multi-source. So there's a multi-source risk rating, the Rojas risk, inventory risk. So even though some of these risks are low, these three top risks are really high. So I might consider getting a different HDMI device for this design or order the rest that are in stock and send an apology letter to everyone else who's doing this stuff manually. But here's what I love the most about this tool. This isn't everything, right? I can literally find all cross references and similar parts to this instantly and find its alternative by going to the crosses here. Then this new list pops up telling me which has the lowest inventory risk and the highest inventory risk. It also tells me how closely a component matches the original component that I'm cross-referencing from. Now that I've been using actual bomb management tools to manage my parts instead of static spreadsheets, I've been a lot happier and like less stressed out for sure. I can download data sheets for my parts. So for instance, here I can click on here and I just download it or pull it, pull the sheet list. And I can even do part research for any device I want. So if I close out here and go to my research tab, I can enter part numbers directly in the tool to view the parts, technical compliance, supply chain risks, and the history data for the parts. Let's say I want to get an amplifier or something. It shows all of this information for any part I want to look up without having to leave the software. So that's the research, but I want to show you this other thing too. I can actually export a full report for the health of my design. So I can choose download report PDF and a report gets generated. So this is super convenient, this full report right here. It's not only for me, but for my clients and gives a much more professional kind of experience for them as well. Here it has an overall grade, the life cycle, multi-sourcing, what percentage of the design has these issues and even has a pie chart and other charts that just give you an overall impression of the problematic parts in your design without you having to do all of this in Excel yourself. It would take a number of hours to just get this going. So in the last eight years, when I first started learning PCB design, 
and designing printed circuit boards. I've been using Microsoft Excel and spreadsheets to manage my bill of materials, but I've come to learn this. A spreadsheet is not created for this. The bill of materials is a living document. So with something static like a spreadsheet tool, it's not going to be dynamic and fluid enough to keep up with the various changes in my files, component footprints, part inventory, or my schematic, especially during part shortages and supply chain issues. So we're approaching a point where we need bomb management software to support us if we really want to go quickly. With how fast parts go in and out of stock, compliance requirements, and complex design specifications, it's really harder to keep up. So that's why I like SE Connect Bomb Risk. I need tools that will give me more access to the latest market data, like right at my fingertips. And this lets me run more efficiently now. I don't have to worry about parts going out of stock by the time I'm done with my PCB layout. I don't have to worry about manually checking and fixing part information and making mistakes along the way, especially since I'm more of a big picture solutions kind of thinker, you know, so having something to help me with these details helps me to stay more productive. The electronics industry is moving away from Microsoft Excel, and we need to use some kind of intelligent bomb management tool to stay competitive in the marketplace. I'm not divorcing myself from Excel entirely, but if I stick with it for bomb management, then I know I'm going to fall behind, which I have this year already. With how competitive the design market is nowadays, I definitely don't want to become an obsolete engineer. You need every advantage to stay ahead, and SE Connect Bomb Risk provides real-time comprehensive part data for me to make sure my design is delivered on time, and I'm sure it will work for you and other engineers as well. Okay, so thank you so much for watching this video and listening to me rant about Bill of Materials Management. If you'd like to see more videos like this, then give this video a thumbs up comment and subscribe because it's your views that make this channel possible. Thank you so much for watching and see you next time. Peace.